I get the the low threshold, high threshold. That's just what is low throttle, what is high throttle with respect to the, the transmitter output or the, the receiver input, sorry. And servo neutral. Yeah. And then servo dead ban is just how much do you have to go off of uh, neutral in order for the motor or in order for the ESC to actually start spinning, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's a, a dead band. There's there's quite a lot of variance between clock speeds of different things so you do need to have a dead band in there because neutral will never be 1500 millisecond microseconds exactly it's always going to be off a little bit but if you've got a very accurate system and you know that it's uh, it'll arm nice and reliably um, every time with uh, when your um, when your throttles midway you know for bi-directional then you can bring dead band down and have a slightly longer throttle range on either side, but uh, does AM32 also benefit like Via Holly does from a higher uh, input PWM frequency if you're doing that? Instead of, um, yeah, on PWM instead of like a D shot, like a I uh, like you mean like 400 like hertz 400 PWM, hertz for example? Or yeah, just like 50 hertz off of your receiver. It uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, the uh, yeah, it doesn't really make a difference. The only thing I'm recording when it comes to the servo signal is the, the positive pulse. Um, so I don't really care about all the space in between. So it's uh, um, doesn't uh, it, it reacts to everything the same way. I'm so interested uh, as I saw somebody test. Via Holly 32, and they found if they just simply increase their PWM frequency, it would noticeably increase the responsiveness by a factor of like 30 milliseconds or similar. Yeah, well, actually, that's no, that is true. That is 100% true with AM32 as well. I don't know what I'm what I'm talking about there, and it's actually because uh, I do have a maximum allowed servo signal change per signal coming in so um, each time that there's a new server signal it, it's it's not allowed to jump a huge amount because i'm trying to just filter out some noise so the faster that's updated the quicker it'll allow it to the servo signal to change um so that's uh i didn't uh I mean, I'm hoping nobody is going to use servo signal for flying with and it should be pretty fast anyway but it's it does have a, a maximum allowed servo signal change. So if it's only allowing, I think right now it's, uh, it can change by up to um, 200 microseconds or something. So it's, uh, if you're to jam the throttle when you're at zero to 2000, um, or from 1000 to 2000, it'll take five servo pulses to get you there completely so five different uh so i mean if it's 50 you know instead of <laughs> it might be like 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds um if you're only at 50 hertz servo frequency and that might go down to you know just uh one or two milliseconds at 400 hertz uh, in order to get to full servo um throttle so, but that's that's the only thing that would really restrict it. But it will make a little difference. I don't think it'll really make that much of a difference because there's not much of a restriction anyway. And it's uh, uh, besides that, the signal is not applied. Uh, it, it's so the, the the throttle signals are based on its own 10 kilohertz control loop. So, if the servo signal were to give it a signal all of a sudden of 2,000, then it's uh, it doesn't matter how fast that's that it's updating the the 10, 10 kilohertz control loop will bring it up to 2,000 very fast. So it's uh, it's not really based on the input uh, frequency how fast the um, control loop runs. So the control loop runs independent of the servo or of any signal input frequency. Uh, 